Well, welcome to the, uh, I, we've, uh, as you know, we've been uh, having problems with Howard Hanson Dam. We found, uh, we discovered him during a large uh, flood event in January. Uh, that, uh, that problem manifests itself in much higher than acceptable flows of water through the right abutment. Not actually part of the dam itself, but uh, the area to the right of it. Come to the next slide, please. Um, this uh, shows, the green area shows the landslide material, which the, uh, the actual dam is this little portion in here. Uh, the ground curtain we're placing is a large black line, and we're using that in conjunction with additional horizontal and vertical drains to uh, basically improve our confidence in uh, having a higher than normal, uh, higher than what we have been pool in the reservoir, but not close to normal. The design capacity for, uh, for Howard Hansen Dam is uh, to accept the pool at an elevation of 1206 feet above sea level. And that brings the water up to right about there. If those, for those of you who've been out to the grout curtain, the top uh, of the concrete at the grout curtain, that's 1206. So we've played, we've been, uh, over the last uh, several months, we've uh, investigated the problem with the reservoir, determined, uh, tested it during spring refill. That caused us to be more concerned, actually. Um, designed a, uh, a couple of interim measures, one of which is the drainage zone, and one of which is this, uh, is this grout curtain. And in the process of doing that, we're, we've, uh, we are nearing completion with the grout curtain, but we have enough, we have two lines of it, we have enough of the first line done and enough testing that I believe that since I'm in flood season now, I can safely accept a larger pool than I was able, than I felt confident doing so before. <coughs> so, with this, uh, with this graph for the next slide, please. We normally run the reservoir like this, and then you can see up here, this is 1206, that's our normal design pool. We start flood season at 1075, that's where the reservoir is now. It is less than 1% full. There's just a little bit of water that we keep in the reservoir to keep uh, from, from carrying sediment down the Green River in excessive amounts, just a very, very small amount of water. So it's empty, and it's, and it's gonna stay empty unless we have a major flood event. We got heavy rain scheduled for today. People are talking about that. That is not of concern to me right now. It's not the type of weather system that causes me concern. Uh, what it is, is uh, that concerns me are atmospheric rivers, sometimes called pineapple expresses, that would strike this basin and other basins near it um, in such a fashion that would dump very heavy levels of rain. Those things concern me. This uh, heavy rain we're gonna see this weekend, I think you'll see a, a small uh, upswing in the flow, probably end up around 2,000, 2,500 cubic feet per second at the Auburn gauge. Um, I try to operate the reservoir to keep that at 12,000 or less, so well below the capacity of the river system. But it's an example of how we'll see heavy rains, people will worry about it, but it's not the type of event that causes us to have major flooding. The uh, reservoir operates by yeah, absorbing uh, short duration pools towards the top of the reservoir. Well, the, uh, with this problem in the right abutment, I was not confident having uh, high pools in the reservoir for um, even short durations. With this grout curtain, I'm willing to accept a higher pool, still not to design capacity for short durations. But it's a curve, it's not a fixed point. I don't have a hard line on the ground. I have acceptable levels for certain amounts of time. So when you look at that, and then you look at the historical flows, inflows that have occurred with Howard Hansen, um, and well actually in the Green River, all of our flows of record, we, we model probabilities associated on that. Those probabilities are what got me to saying that with a, a much less capacity that we'd have a one in three chance of exceeding the uh, levee system at uh, the Auburn gauge. That's a gross simplification of a very complicated hydrologic study, but it, if I use that same comparison point, I believe now with the, what we could accept on the pool that we're looking at a one in 25 chance of having a storm in a given storm season that would uh, overcome the capacity of the reservoir and uh, cause uh, the levees, cause the water at the Auburn gauge to be over 12,000, which is what we consider to be the design capacity of that. So that may sound like a big reduction, 
And okay, it is, it's a pretty substantial reduction over one and three. It's still uh, quite a bit less than what we believe is about a one in 140 uh, level of protection provided by uh, Howard Hansen when it's a design capacity. So the, uh, it's a substantial change in the risk for the people downstream. And it's also, as we know, have we've known from uh, many years uh, here in the Pacific Northwest, the fact that it's a 1 in 25 doesn't mean we're going to not get a couple of major events close together. And there are several flood basins over the last several years that have seen um, very low probability and high uh, consequence flooding occurring back in back-to-back -back years. So I'm very, uh, I remain very concerned about this. It's a much higher than uh, what I would I want to see the risk uh, being for downstream. I'm, uh, but I'm pleased with the results of the ground curtain. We're going to continue to work on it. There's some other modifications we're doing to the contract. Those modifications led. Those modifications will include some additional uh, grouting to be done at this end, tying it into the bedrock and expanding your area there. And at this far end, uh, some additional work extending it slightly uh, at that location. So that uh, those things will continue to do that. I will have a much better idea of the performance of the grout curtain from an objective sense um, in the spring when I'm able to raise the pool. But we needed to determine what we could do with um, these interim measures for this flood season, and that's why uh, I'm announcing uh, this so people have a better understanding of how this grout curtain and the drainage tunnels are affecting how we see the probable risk and how we plan on operating the reservoir. We've talked about what grouting is. It's essentially we've injected, uh, oh, I think, 400,000 gallons of grout into this abutment filling many of the voids there. That tells you there's a lot of space in there that water could be moving through. That, uh, um, and in the process of doing that, we do verification testing to determine what we believe the permeability to be in that, in that localized area. But again, that's some, that is uh, an estimation of the performance of the grout curtain. The real test of the grout curtain will occur when we have a pool behind it, but we have uh, substantial confidence enough that, uh, again, I'm willing to accept a larger pool for a, for a uh, short duration. And then here, this isn't a good picture, but this shows a drilling rig, very specialized drilling rig inside the drainage tunnel that is drilling a series of 25 horizontal drains out into the right abutment. Believe it or not, that's the back of the tunnel there, and there's a guy in between this drill rig and there that's handling the little two-foot sections of uh, drill casing to place these drains in there. People might ask, well, if I'm worried about water, why am I putting drains in? The reason is, is that helps us control. We know where the water's going, we track it, and those, and those drains allow us to keep and monitor and control the flow of water in areas that we want it to go. This was another key, critical component of uh, our interim measures, um, but neither this nor the grout curtain fixed the dam. They, uh, there are initial repairs, and these initial repairs we wanted to have in place for this flood season and subsequent flood season until we can uh, design and construct a, uh, a permanent repair of the dam. Next slide. Okay. Uh, I talked about the advanced measures downstream. Um, lots and lots of uh, HESCO bastions, super sacks, and sandbags have been issued out to uh, uh, King County, uh, Washdot, the four cities in the valley. And you've seen, and many of you have all covered, the preparation that's going on in terms of raising those levels. That, that preparation is critical. That raises, we believe, the capacity of, that levy, of the uh, river system, the channel capacity, from about 12,000 cubic feet per second to 13,900 cubic feet per second. That gives me, um, that again, like everything else, reduces the risk of overtopping them if they're higher. And that reduction in risk kind of equates out to about a 1 in 32, 1 in 33 um, probability of it overtopping those higher levels. So that work that the, the, the city's done, the counties have done, um, and with the, with the Corps' involvement has been critical to reducing their risk. And uh, I think it, we should, at this point, although our risk is lower, not look at this as a moment to be complacent. Um, most places in the, in the country, if you, had, if you told them they had 25-year uh, risk reduction, they would be really excited uh, about not having um, adequate protection, right? Well, um, 
we moved from three, which is bad, to 25, which is still not very good. And uh, the message I would I would send to everybody is you, may, you need to remain prepared. If you haven't already bought blood insurance, I would still tell you to buy it. And uh, they, uh, we're going to continue to work on the structure and continue to try to increase its capacity so we can reduce the risk of flooding for the people of the Green River Valley. But uh, we are uh, we are not out of the woods yet. Uh, but uh, we're a little bit closer to getting out of the woods. 